Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be going over more detail on the EG4 12K PV. I'm going to be doing more testing and I'm also going to answer some questions people have asked about the unit. Some of the questions like, could I show how I paralleled the EG4 LLS models with the wall mount battery here? And can the 12K PV parallel with the 18K PV? A lot of people have asked that question. All right, so let me jump right to it. I'm going to go into detail on how I hook the batteries together first. The Power Pro models here, the indoor and outdoor version, both come with two sets of cables here. So they come with two sets of positive and negative cables that can hook into the battery. So that extra set of cables, I crimped two lugs on them and then sent it to two bus bars down here. So you don't have to do that. You could actually, these are the two cables coming from the, ba the three rack batteries that I have here. And you could actually just send those cables in to the box here and attach it straight to the Power Pro if you crimped on two Amphenol connectors to those cables. So there, there is, like I said, two different ways to do it. I liked the bus bar option because I can also hook my charge verter into the bus bars at the same time. This is probably a good time to mention, if you guys haven't watched how I crimped lugs onto these Power Pro cables, then that would probably be a good time to watch my 6000 XP video. I showed how to get the fine stranded wire into a lug, and that would apply to the ferrules I mentioned in the last video also. It's very fine stranded wire, so to get it into a lug properly, you have to be able to have something to bind that wire and to be able to slide the lug over top of it. Anyway, these are the bus bars I attached to. They are 1000 amp bus bars or terminal blocks, however you want to phrase it. And yeah, you guys might have noticed them on the last half of the video that I did on the 12K PV. They are from Overkill Solar. They actually make these bus bars there. Yeah, they're super nice. So from that point, it's just a matter of getting the communication right. And these batteries have the same BMS as the Pro models. So it's not an issue at all. The Pro model would be the master. You've already got that dip switch set to communicate with the inverter. And then they list in both manuals for both batteries the dip switch order from that point on. So this would be set to two. And you guys can see here, two is down. And then here, the second, the third one would be two dip switches down. And then so on. There's number three down. So it's not hard at all. Like I said, it's in the manual if you guys had any questions about that. And I don't have a longer cable with me right now, but I can show you guys this cable is just a smidge short to be able to get into the box up there because of where I have the cabinet here. So I had an extension here. So I just plugged in, I think this is a Cat5 cable. I just plugged this into a Cat5 extension cable and then I'm gonna feed it through up there and then plug it into that battery and we should have communication. The far left is the CAN port and then it's RS-45 and both of these over here are the battery communication ports. So all I have to do is hook the cable into one of those and we're good. So something to keep in mind, these and these both have the latest firmware on them. So that's something you're gonna wanna do. And then once you've plugged them in, like I just did, you're gonna have to wait around five minutes before it'll show up on the monitor site. And then you should be able to see all of them on there. Keeping in mind, of course, that both of these battery banks were fully charged before connecting them together. And this is what it looks like when the Power Pro and the LLs are paired together. You can see all the different uh, data on the monitor site, like I've showed you guys in the past. So this applies to the EG4 LL models, like I said and the Power Pro models, that would be the indoor and outdoor versions. You can see all this data on your site, which is pretty neat. So inside the 18K PV's wiring compartment here, it's a little busy looking because the CTs are in here also. So let me cover the different ways in which you could hook the 12K PV into the 18K PV. So first, if you were off grid and you didn't have anything growing into the grid input, you could hook it into there. And so it would treat the 12 kPV like the grid, in other words. If you were to exceed your 12,000 watt max on this unit, then it would start pulling from the 12 kPV to make up that extra difference. Likewise here, you could hook up to the generator port for AC coupling, and it would treat it pretty similar. You could use the power from the 12 kPV through the generator port here on the 18 kPV. So option one and two, you could actually do with other inverters. So that's not really the question people are asking when they're asking 
where, whether these units can parallel with each other. What they want to know is if they can directly parallel here with parallel communication. So can you hook the 18 kPV in parallel with the 12 kPV? And the answer is yes, you can, but it's going to limit you to the least of what it can do. Essentially, it's going to only output what the 12 kPV can output. So it's going to turn the 18 kPV into a 12 kPV. Something to note though, if you did parallel the 12k with the 18 kPV, the 18k can still pull in the uh, 18 kilowatts of solar. So it doesn't limit the solar, it's the output that it would be throttling. So it would only be able to output the 8 kilowatts but it could still take in the same amount of PV. I hope I covered that thoroughly because that's probably the most frequent question I've gotten on the 12 kPV is about paralleling with the 18 kPV. And the short answer is, as of right now, yes, with limitations like I just mentioned. All right, I'm gonna test that 10,000 watt output again, guys, and see how long it can last at 10,000 watts. I've got both charge verters hooked up now, so it should be a little easier this time. The older version is hooked to a battery that I haven't reviewed yet, a rack battery. The newer version is actually hooked to the MK battery I reviewed in my last video, the MK energy battery, and it does communicate with it. So it's showing 51% state of charge. So I've got this one. I think I've got this set on 90 amps and this one's set on hundred. I think we're pushing like 80 something amps in there now. So let's see if I can get right around 10,000 Watts on the 12 KPV and see how long it lasts. There we go, we're over 10,000 now. I know it's rated for quite a bit at 10 kilowatts. I thought it was a minute. I need to check the specs again because I'm here at three minutes over 10,000 watts. Okay, we shut down just a little over five minutes, right at five minute and 30 seconds, something like that, five minutes, 30 seconds. Yeah, so over 10 kilowatts, for over five minutes. There's a couple things I wanted to mention in the wiring compartment of the 12 kPV. First would be these little bolts here. I didn't mention them in my last video, but these actually will bolt down to the conduit box, the outdoor conduit box that you can get for these if you get the outdoor rated Power Pro battery. There's little uh, threads in there, and I'll actually show it to you here in just a minute but this can bolt down to that conduit box. And the 18 kPV, the newer versions of that come with it also. My older version that I got originally didn't have these. So I still have one conduit box here that I haven't put up yet because I've got that one last Power Pro battery that I wanna put outside. But this is the box here for it. And see here, these are the threaded holes here. So that would bolt directly from the wiring compartment of the 18 kPV or 12 kPV into the box here. The second thing would be, if you're not gonna be using a generator on this unit, for instance, if you have a charge verter, which I recommend, then you can use this as a smart port. So your generator port can be turned into a smart port. So say you wanted to charge your EV only certain times of the day, or when your battery's full, it can be set as a state of charge thing. So when your battery is full or reaches 80% or whatever level you have it set on, this smart port can come on and you'll actually, you could feed your EV or whatever, water heater, whatever kind of smart load you wanna feed, this generator port can do that. And you can see here in the discharge settings, this is where you would set all the parameters for your smart load. So that generator port can power whatever kind of smart load you want to. You can also set this on your phone or with your computer, obviously too. I'm actually gonna be using this smart load option on my 18 kPV to power some test inverters on this wall. So it's a really cool option to have. A lot of higher end inverters are going this route. So for my final act on the video, <laughs> um, I thought I might, this might be interesting here. I hooked the 6000 XP into the grid input on the 12 kPV. So we now have grid input here. So what it should do as I exceed the rated output of this inverter, it should borrow whatever power it needs from the 6000 XP. So I'm gonna start those chargers up again, the charge inverters up, and see what happens when we get over eight kilowatts. Here we go, so the 6000 XP is providing 1600 watts right now, and the 12 kPV staying right around 8000 watts. This is really cool, so now we're supplying 9200 watts with both inverters. 
it's neat to see that this type of setup can work in a pinch, but I think ultimately it'd be best to see what EG4 comes out with to try to pair all these inverters together in a, in a true parallel type of setting. I am still super impressed with the 12K PV though, which I guess that's not a shock. I've been using the 18K PV for a year now, and this is basically just a miniature version in most ways. So yeah, guys, I'm gonna wrap things up, but uh, yeah, I thought it was pretty neat that the 6000 XP can assist the 12K PV if you needed that. And there's a lot to cover with hybrid inverters in general, but there's, especially with these, they've got so many different options. So I'm gonna keep doing testing on this inverter. If you guys have any questions, as always, you can leave it in the comments below. If you wanted me to take a look at anything, if, with, if it's within my power, I'll give it a try. Something I neglected to mention in the last video is this inverter has an 80 amp pass through. So even though it can output 33 and some change amps, you can actually pass through 80 amps from the grid through this inverter. But of course, there's lots of other stuff to look at in the manual and the spec sheet. So I will leave a link to this inverter down below in the description. This thing is a real workhorse though. As far as the testing I'm doing, it can take a large inductive load. It can take consistent loads well above the rated output. So like I mentioned, I'm gonna continue doing other testing on the inverter. I'll continue to stress test it. And I'm gonna check some of the other features on it also. Hopefully this video was helpful. I appreciate you guys watching and stay tuned.